Yo, what's going on, everybody? You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. There has been a lot of smoke, to say the least, around the New York Giants coaching staff, and specifically with Brian Dable and Wink Martindale. There was a, um, a report a couple of weeks ago that the Giants may move on from Wink Martindale in season. And then Jay Glazer of Fox Sports doubled down on that. Then there was a report from the volume that said that Every single coaching staff on the Giants does not like Brian Dable. They think he is a clown, and they are tired of Brian Dable MFing coaches on this coaching staff. And now Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post, who is plugged in with this team. He was all over the Saquon Barkley situation. He was all over the Daniel Jones situation. He thinks that all three coordinators, Mike Kafka, Wink Martindale, and Thomas McGahee, will not be back with the New York Giants next season. And let's be honest, after the Giants did what they did last year, the expectations were sky high for this football team. And any time you fall short of expectations, specifically in the National Football League, there are going to be major changes. These things happen after disappointing seasons. I'm going to tell you in a little bit why I'm not really ready to just yank the cord on Wink Martindale and Mike Kafka. Ryan Dunleavy said this, I don't think any of the Giants' three coordinators will be here next season. When you have a season like this, change is inevitable. Mike Kafka could be looking to go somewhere else, either develop QBs or calls plays elsewhere. We'll talk about Wing Martindale in a second. Let's really just dive in a little bit into Mike Kafka. I think Kafka, it's kind of hard to grade his tenure with the New York Giants. Just like it's difficult to evaluate Daniel Jones with the New York Giants. He doesn't have a lot of ammunition to work with. He's on his third string quarterback. They've had 15 different offensive line combinations. Your star tight end got hurt. Your wide receivers are not really the most dominant guys. But what we saw last year was incredible. Let's focus on this year. We'll go to next year, last year in a second. The Giants' offensive stats this year are absolutely putrid. They are on pace to be one of the worst offenses in NFL history, averaging less than 14 points per game, less than 290 yards of total offense, one of the, exactly, the worst uh, passing offense in the National Football League. Rush offense has been decent-ish, I guess, uh, which is crazy because you're usually behind in a lot of games, and when you're behind, you throw. Um, look, as bad as these numbers are right here, Mike Kafka made Daniel Jones look pretty damn good last year. And I don't want to give Kafka all the credit in the world. I'm sure Dable had a huge part in how the Giants ran their offense last year. But when it comes to scheming people open, which the data says the Giants have some of the most separation created amongst wide receivers in this league. You can't make the passes for the quarterback. And the thing that I love the most about Mike Kafka is the efficiency and the creativity in the red zone at least in 2022. In 2022, the Giants were the fifth-rated red zone offense in touchdown percentage. That tells me you have a creative offensive coordinator. You're finding different and unique ways to score in that area. And what you are putting on the chalkboard is being translated to what is going on the gridiron. I would bring back Mike Kafka. I think that Kafka is a smart football coach. He's the guy that I thought brought the best out of your quarterback. Look, He's drawn up a game plan that got Tommy DeVito two wins. He drew up a game plan that had Tyrod Taylor get a win and have a chance to take down the Buffalo Bills on the one-yard line. Is it just an offensive explosion? No. I understand why some people would want to move on from him. Who are you going to get? I'm not sure. we got a list of a couple of names. We'll roll through these quickly. Gerard Johnson, the quarterback coach for the Houston Texans. You look at what he's been able to do when it comes to the development and the maturation of C.J. Stroud. You got to like that. And with the thought and the idea out there that the Giants could draft a quarterback this offseason, getting a guy like Johnson to call your plays, former quarterback in the NFL, was good at Texas A&M. Maybe you get a guy that could develop another guy. What about Kevin Petulo? I'm sorry if I apologize for butchering that name. He's the passing game coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think he's done a really good job with Jalen Hurts since 2021. Started coaching in 2003 at South Florida, where he also played college football. He specializes in quarterbacks and wide receivers, two positions the Giants could use a little bit more beef on. If I had to predict who the next offensive coordinator for the Giants is, I'm going to put my money on Ken Dorsey, who was the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. He was fired midseason, but if you rewind the clock to the offseason uh, uh, off prior to the 2022 season, 
Brian Dable wanted to hire Ken Dorsey as his offensive coordinator, but he elected to stay and took an upgrade at, in Buffalo from QB coach to play caller, and the Giants settled on Mike, Mike Kafka. I think he's a good play caller, and I think the connection between him and Dave will make him a possible match. What about Tanner Engstrand, the passing game corner and coordinator for the Detroit Lions? He's in his fourth season with Detroit. He was the Lions tight end coach in 2022, and he's worked with Jim Harbaugh at San Diego and Michigan. When I watch the Detroit Lions, I just like what they do offensively, and I think he's a guy that could come in and help kind of modernize and help this Giants playbook if you do move on from a guy like Mike Kafka. What about Mike Denbrock, the OC for LSU? Right now, LS, LSU is one of the best, if not the best, offense in college football. I love what he did with Jaden Daniels um, from his from 2022 season to the 2023 season. He was a Cincinnati OC in 2018 to 2020. And if the Giants want to draft Jaden Daniels, Denbrock should be targeted. A guy that knows him well, and he's somebody that I think could translate um, and kind of just help anytime you have a relationship with your quarterback that you're going to get. Going back to college, I think that makes some sense. Any familiarity, and any comfortability, I think, could help a rookie quarterback. What about Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator and QB coach for Washington? Love what he's done with Michael Penix, and I believe the same thing is true. If you're going to draft potentially the college quarterback, Michael Penix out of Washington, what about bringing a guy that he knows and a guy that knows him inside and out? Maybe you want to bring a guy that's had a lot of success in the NFL and he's been around for a little bit. What about Deuce Staley, the former running back? I think he'd be a good fit with the New York Giants as offensive coordinator. He's worked under Andy Reid, Chip Kelly, and Doug Peterson. So he's got a lot of different great offensive minds in his head and kind of his DNA and makeup of what an NFL offense should be. And Staley became a vocal leader on Campbell's staff last year as the Lions assistant head coach. And I just liked what he was about when I was watching Hard Knocks last year. What about Jake Peets, the passing game coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams? He's been an offensive and assistant QB coach from 2017 to 2019, has worked under Nick Saban as a QB coach, and Sean McVay speaks very highly of him. And we've seen a couple of other Sean McVay disciples excel other places in the National Football League. What about Joe Blamier? I know I'm saying that wrong. The passing game coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's been a coach with the Chiefs since 2016. Maybe you don't want to go down the same road of Mike Kafka where you brought in a former Chief, and I understand that. But Andy Reid has praised him um, just on the innovative type of offense he runs and creative concepts. And I think he'd work well with an athletic QB. And the guys that I want to target in this draft when you talk about Michael Penix and as well as Jaden Daniels, even Bo Nix is somewhat athletic. Uh, I think those guys would all thrive under him. But the question is, should the Giants fire Mike Kafka? In my opinion, those are the nine guys that are probably at the top of everyone's list when it comes to hiring new offensive coordinators. If the Giants fired him, I think they'd look that way. What do you think, though? Should the Giants fire Mike Kafka? Type Y for yes, type N for next, uh, N for no. Coming up next, Wink Martindale and the New York Giants. Could they mutually be parting ways? We've got some reports on that we'll dive into in a second. But first, I got to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the promo code CLNS, and Prize Picks will match your initial deposit up to $100. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players. You choose more or less on their projected stat line, and then you just let the players do their thing. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. It's my favorite way to play fantasy sports. It's the number one way to play daily fantasy sports. You can actually win real money. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Look, there has been a lot of smoke around Wink Martindale and Brian Dabel. There was reports that they do not like each other. They can't stand each other. They want to move on. I'll say this. Wink Martindale's coached some pretty good games in the past couple of years. And I think that he is still a really good defensive coordinator. Let's go to what Ryan Dunleavy had to say. Maybe he can illustrate it in a better way than I can. He said, Wink Martindale, that's the one fans want to keep. That's the one that will hurt Dable's cachet with the fan base the most. Look, Wink wore out his welcome with the Ravens after four years. And Brian Dable is very hard on his coaches. He also went on to say how Dable and Martindale have completely 
contrasting personalities. Dable is a guy that's loud and on sideline. He's expressive and he, and he shows all his emotions. Where Wink Martindale is cool, calm, and collected. Dable is a keep everything in house guy. Martindale's an open book. You look at what happened in the Xavier McKinney situation. And I'm sure that Wink Martindale's not happy with the way the offense is playing. And Brian Dable is responsible for the offense. That's why he's hired here. Look, Wink is a good defensive coordinator. Anyone that tells you that Martindale is not a good DC, they are, they're just simply wrong. And also this. You don't have to love your coworkers. I don't even like seeps, and we have to work all the day, all day together. I don't like him. I don't like Roly. I don't like any of the guys I work with. But we find a way to get it done because we're mature professionals. We have professional maturity, to quote Brett Scott. You don't have to love your coworkers. He's a good DC. But I will say, when you work with someone and they constantly MF you, MF Wink, MF Martindale, MF Wink, maybe that does get a little bit annoying. I think if he moves on, it may be actually Wink Martindale moving on. And I think if it does happen, it'll be a agreed to part ways. Uh, someone asked if I like Tom Downey. No, I don't like him either. You look at the defensive stats for the Giants. Once again, not all that great. But I will say this. Wink Martindale's development when it comes to the personnel on this team is apparent. I mean, Kayvon Thibodeau in year two was on pace to have 16 sacks this season. Dexter Lawrence went from being a really good interior defensive lineman to, in my opinion, the best interior defensive lineman in the National Football League. Bobby O'Karrake, he was good with Indy. He's better with the Giants. Micah McFadden, a fifth-round pick. He looks like a long-term starter in this league. Xavier McKinney has made some plays under him. Deontay Banks as a rookie, I think, continues to get better week over week. You see the development and kind of just the style on the field. It's apparent with Wink Martindale. What are you going to do? Are you going to fire him? Who are you going to hire that's better? I'm sure there's somebody out there that is better than Wink Martindale. I don't know who it is. I'm not a GM. It's going to be Joe Shane and Brian Dable's job to find it. If I had to predict it, I could see the Giants moving on from Mike Kafka and Wink Martindale. Not so sure I would just do that, though. I'll ask you, should the Giants fire Wink? Type F for fire, type K for keep. One guy that I believe 100% should be fired, and I don't love saying this because I don't enjoy seeing grown men that support their family lose their job. But Thomas McGahee, the special teams coordinator for the Giants, the minute after the final whistle is blown when the Giants season is over, he should be fired. He should be relieved of his duties. He's been bad for a while. I think he's been with the Giants for seven years at this point, and it always seems like the Giants are one of the worst special teams in the league. Right now, Pro Football Focus has the Giants special teams ranked as 24th in the league. <sighs> Thomas McGahee should not be with the Giants next year. Don't want to spend too much more time on that. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for tuning in. If you haven't yet, give me a follow over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. And if you want to continue the conversation on what the Giants are going to do with their coaching staff, send me a DM over there, and let's chop it up.